Thank you for joining us today. You know, last week we talked about the feeding of the 5,000. This week we're going to be talking about testing after a miracle. And we're going to look at the things the disciples walked through in their life after they saw this miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. I encourage you to get your Bible and, and get ready to join with us. But before that, the worship team is going to lead us into worship. So enter in today.
Thank you, worship team. You know, we're going to be talking about testing after a miracle. You know, Jesus walked on the water, but there are seven different miracles in this passage. And I invite you to look at them and kind of chew it up and and think about it. Today we're going to be looking at John chapter 6. But let me ask you a question first. When was the last time you saw an absolute miracle or or you were amazed by Jesus you know when was the last time you marveled at him and what he's done I mean have you gone into shock and awe of his miracle working power in 2nd Thessalonians 1 10 it says this when he comes in that day to be glorified in the saints and he will be admired among all those who believe because of our testimony among you was believed. You know, it's important for us to share what God is doing in our life. We need to be talking about what God is doing. When Christ returns, all the people who have believed are going to be amazed by Jesus. And you'll be in that group because you believed what you were told, what the Word says. You know, last week I said we looked at the story and we saw Jesus test the Philip, by asking him, where are we going to get bread to feed these people? And the disciples immediately went to their mind, well, uh, trying to figure out how to make a solution to the problem. Instead of going to Jesus, who already knew what he was going to do for the solution. When facing testings and trials in our lives, we immediately start trying to figure out our own solution if there are things that are going on in our life we try to figure out how to do it how we can make it happen rather than going to Jesus that needs to be our first result is we go to Jesus who has the solution already just as Jesus asked fit to ask Philip to test him for he had already had in mind what he was going to do so Jesus fed the multitude with a few loaves and two fish. And again, he demonstrated that he was God. That he can do miracles. And that he is what we need for life as well. When we see the feeding of the multitude as pointing towards the gospel. In verse 48, it tells us that Jesus came down from heaven. That his own body may be broken and put on the cross. To give life to those who believe. The cross is where he feeds the multitude by giving his life. So that our sin might be forgiven. That we might have eternal life. It's important to see that. But today we're going to be talking about Jesus walking on the water. If you have your Bible you can turn with me to John 6. Starting in verse 16. Now when evening came. His disciples went down to the sea. They got into the boat and went over the the sea towards Capernaum. And it was already dark, and Jesus did not come with them. Then the sea arose because of a great wind blowing. So when they had rowed out about three or four miles, they saw Jesus on the sea. And drawing near to the boat, they were afraid. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they willingly received him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at land where they were going. So let's look today at two things. First, the cause of their fear, and second, the solution to their fear. You know, so here we have a situation. Lunch is over. We just fed the 5,000. We saw the miracle. We saw the 12 basketfuls left over. And evening has come, and so the disciples are kind of getting in their boats, heading towards home. But it's night, and they soon face some difficulties in their boat. Notice three problems in verse 17 and 18. First, it's dark, 
And it can be scary out in the boat, in the dark, in the night. You constantly wonder what you're going to run into. And it's downright frightening. But not only was it dark, it tells us in verse 18 that the strong wind was blowing. I mean, rough seas. Now, if you've ever been in a rowboat or canoe or a kayak and you're paddling in the water and you run up against a strong wind, it's very difficult to make any progress. I mean, you feel like you're doing it. It's almost like you're paddling upstream. In fact, from the time it got dark until 3 in the morning, they had only made about 3 to 4 miles. That was, I mean, that's slow. They're not moving at all. So it's dark. They can hardly see. The wind's blowing. And they're going nowhere, it feels like. And finally, because the wind and the waters are rough, so they're paddling around in the storm at night, being tossed, making a little progress. Sounds like life sometimes, doesn't it? You feel like I'm, I'm doing all I can and I'm not going anywhere. But this isn't the worst of it. The real problem is stated in verse 17. Jesus had not joined them. It says in verse 19 that they had rowed three or four miles. In other words, just halfway. And, man, they've been out there working. It wasn't just like they were just like twiddling their thumbs. They were working to get where they were. They were halfway across. But why does it tell us? Why does it tell us this? We need to know how far he was from shore. It wasn't like, oh, we're 100 yards away from shore. No. That's not what he said. They were three miles out. Do you know what you can see at three miles out back to shore? Nothing. At dark, in a storm, nothing. You're not going to see anything. I mean... Some people can say, well, if, if they were 100 feet off the shore, people can explain that miracle away. That Jesus, they just saw Jesus walking on the shore. No. He was near the boat. No. Well, the problem is he was three miles out from shore at night. And you can't see nothing. And if he was just walking on the shore, why were they afraid? No. They see what they think is a ghost. Because people don't walk on water. If some ghost or something was walking on top of the water in verse 19, it says they were terrified. Now, they wouldn't have been terrified if they knew their Bible. You think, what do you mean by that? Well, if you look in Job chapter 9, it says, he alone spreads out the heaven and treads on the waves of the sea. Job says, God walked on water. And if they had known that, they would have been, oh, that's got to be God, because he's walking on the water. Eh, that isn't how it happened. Had they had their Bibles, they might have said, this is not a ghost, because they remembered what Job said. God alone treads on the waves of the sea. So, here their cause of their fear is, it's dark, it's windy, the waters are very rough, and Jesus is not with them. And they got this ghost thing to deal with too. They were terrified. See, usually life's number of problems come at once. It's not just dark, it's stormy. In other words... About the time we get sick, the medical bills start coming in. And then we can't work and our income stops. Or about the time the air conditioner breaks, the freezer quits. And you discover termites in the walls. And then you find out you got a mold problem. That's the way it works. I know the other day I was working at the house. I was doing some things. And the next thing you know, I got water in my utility room. I got a leak in my water line outside the house and it's coming in but i didn't know that it seemed like 
man, I'm working on this one thing, and then this another thing comes, and this another thing. And it's like, why does it happen that way? It just does. God will get you through it. And this is the way it is. You know, Job didn't just lose his ox and his donkeys and his servants. No, he lost his sons and his daughters and his health. Problems and difficulty come in droves at times. Job says this, man born of woman in a few days and full of trouble. Seemed like everything was happening. So here it is, the disciples. They're out on the boat in the storm, not making much progress. See a ghost, they're terrified. But they're going to discover the solution to their fears. Look at verse 20. Jesus says, it is I, do not fear. And verse 21 tells us that Christ got into the boat and they immediately arrived at their destination. In fact, the parallel passage in, tells us the same story. The solution to the fears of the disciples was Christ's word and Christ's presence. Don't fear, it is me. And he got in the boat. He said, don't be afraid. His word calmed their fears. You know, when Jesus speaks to us, it brings calmness to our fears. These things have spoken to you that you might have peace. He wants to bring peace to your life. His word brings peace. Listen, we are sacred in life. We have the resource to go to. We have the word of God. But if you don't know the word of God, it can't come out. I encourage you, get into the word. Read the word of God. It has a lot to give. But not only does his word calm our fears, his presence calms our storm. Look at Mark chapter 6. It's neat how both John and 6 and Mark 6 record the same story. Mark adds a few details. Notice them, starting in verse 48. Then he saw them straining at rowing, for the wind was against them. Now about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea, and would have passed them by. And when he saw them, him walking in the sea, they supposed it was a ghost, and they cried out. For they all saw him and were troubled. But immediately he talks with them and said to them, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Then he went up into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. And they were greatly amazed themselves beyond measure and marvel. They were in complete awe. They marveled at Jesus. What have you done? I mean, I would have been yippying. Woohoo! Yes, victory. His words not only calmed their fears, but it calmed their storm. Now, Jesus is always with his people. He's with us. He says, never will I leave you or forsake you. But I want to tell you this. He's especially near to those who are going through the storms of life. So what can we have? We can have confidence when we face the storms or even severe trials. You know, his presence will be very near to us and calm our storms. Even though things are happening, we can walk in peace knowing that he's with us. Even though, as David says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. So do not fear for I'm with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41.10. Isaiah 46.4 says this. Even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I sustain you and I will rescue you. Isn't that what Jesus did here for his disciples? You and I have no need to fear any storm of life because the storm 
that we're facing, God's presence is right there with us. He is with us. He will be near. We'll feel him carry us through whatever we're facing. Jesus is the foundation of our peace. That we can walk through difficult times and know he's with us. Jesus said, it is I, do not be afraid. Even so, in Ephesians 2.14 we read, for he himself is our peace. He is our peace. And it goes on to say in, in verse 17, he came and he preached peace to those who were far away, you and I, and to those who were near. See, we are promised peace from a long time ago. And he, he keeps his word. So let's apply this practically to our life. Because there are times when our life, it seems like that things are dark and they're stormy and we're tossed to and fro and we're going, we feel like the disciples in the storm. And we're not making much progress. We're not getting anywhere. We feel like, I've been, I've been doing this all week and I still like I'm sitting still. Sometimes even we feel like we're alone without the presence of Jesus. Just as in the storm at night fighting against the wind, we're terrified. In other words, we're having difficulties. The enemy feels like it's creeping in. The trials and the sickness and the hardships are all around us. And it's like, how am I going to make it? But you know what this passage teaches us? Jesus sees us. His eyes on us and our difficulty and our hardships. And he comes to us because he cares for us. See, he wants to touch your life. He wants to minister to you. He wants you to call on him. He wants you to reach out to him and say, Lord, I need you. I need you. Jesus, I need you. Help me. I don't know what to do. I've tried everything I know to do, but nothing seems to be working right. The reality is that if we believe in Jesus, we may often face danger, dangers and perils. But Jesus comes at the right time in the midst of our problems, just in time, and he calms us, and he calms our fears, and he brings us safely to shore. It is I. Do not be afraid. That's what he's saying to you today. You know, all the things that you're going through, he's saying to you, it is I. Do not be afraid. Call on me, and I will answer. Lord, today, I just pray for each and every person today that hear this who are walking through the midst of a difficult situation to remind them that you are there, that you bring peace in the midst of the struggle they're facing. Lord, as we trust you, you bring us through so many things. Lord, you are right there with us. You you touch and you minister to our life exactly how we need it. And Lord, today we just give you glory and we give you honor for doing that. Lord, let us strengthen someone else by the word of our testimony that we would share things with others and how you're working in our life, how you bring us through difficult times, that it may encourage someone else. Lord, we just give you glory and honor today. In your name we pray. Amen. I'm so glad you joined with us today. I just encourage you to be a faithful supporter. You can go to our website and give through PayPal, or you can use Bill Pay, or you can use the U.S. Mail. We would love to hear from you, love for you to join us. Come, share service with us. Try us out. See if it fits for size. So come be a part here.